Hi, I'm Stephanie Lester, and today we're creating the Needle Felted Snowman from the Crafty Kit Company. Hi everyone, welcome to the Needle Felting Workshop. As you know, today we're going to be um, needle felting the snowman from the kit from the Crafty Kit Company. Now, what we like to do is to do more of a felt along workshop than a tutorial. So, um, say we're all in it together, we'll um, go along at the same pace. Now, I it's a beginner's um, kit, so I try to go uh, fairly slowly, but obviously if you want to go quicker, you can just fast forward to the bits that you um, want to extra help or even you may just want to felt along with the rest of us completely up to you is the point okay if you've got any questions then please do either put in the comments um, below this youtube video on my youtube channel or you can join the crafty kit company needle felting group on facebook or join my um, facebook group two teaks tips and tutorials um, and put your questions there and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can okay I think that's about it. Brilliant. We will now go to the overhead camera so you can see exactly what I'm doing and I'll explain as we go along and then I'll come back here at the end and say goodbye. See you in a minute. So here we are at the um, demo desk and this is everything you're going to get in the kit for our festive snowman so first of all we have our instructions brilliant we have our white wall we have our black our red and our orange we have a little pipe cleaner and a rope for the, his little broom um, we have a little felting mat and we've got our needles fantastic the only extra thing you will need is uh, a little pair of scissors or a pair of snips just to cut the um, rope for the broom brush excellent right so let's um, get started and um, as this is a beginner's kit I will briefly um, say at the very start with regards to felting and the best way of stabbing going to open the instructions so that we go through um, and you can follow as well on your instructions at home brilliant okay so let's put our colors aside and so we've got all of our white wall I will put my pipe cleaner and um, I was going to say string that's going to call it rope for a minute string okay and so we've got our um, got our needles so let me just take my needles out now what I do to my needles is I firstly have um, the one singular one and then secondly I sellotape the other two together okay now I normally have them so that they're kissing but at the moment they seem to um there we go that way around so that they are one um, top goes one way one top goes the other hugging kissing however you want to think just so that you've got two together which enables us to go a little bit faster um, of stabbing on the pieces like the main um, core of the body so obviously what we're going to start with is we're going to start with doing our snowman um, body and then our snowman head which is obviously going to come from all of this now we've got little arms as well so what we're going to do is divide up the wall 
so what I do is I fold this so I've got equal okay and then I've got it in four okay so I'm going to use half of it for the body and then the other half for the head and the arms right so that's half so I'm going to pull it apart now um, you can't pull it apart by pulling there what you need to do is just come out come out and pull so it just because you're not breaking the wool obviously you're just pulling the ends of the wool apart so you can see how that piece broke there that piece broke there and that's just because there are more ends of each strand of wool there and vice versa lovely let's put that half over there ready to be called upon okay so we've got our two halves over here so i'm going to start with one half to do the body now we are going to make now our final shape is obviously um this nice little shape and you can make yours with a nice little pudgy belly or you can make yours nice and tall it's completely up to you i'm just going to do a nice average shape of snowman if there is such a thing okay and so in our instructions here it tells us this nice little kind of eggy shape because you would add the head on the top okay so to start with the i think the biggest um issue that i get told about by beginners is getting the wall started okay so when you've started with your um, initial shape is to get that core going and in this case to get the egg shape and in the case of the head to get the ball so the quickest way to get started is to take your wall now I think size wise it's going to be pretty much like the central third that's kind of um, about the length of the the little pad here um, stabbing pad so I think that's the size I'm going to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a knot and I'm going to tie a bigger knot here and a smaller knot here because it's sort of big at the bottom coming down to the top so I'm just going to take my wall wrap it around and through and leave that so I've got a tail there not so tight just pull it there you go then this end I'm going to put another little knot there and I'm going to pull that through and I could pull it just a little bit tighter so that there you go I've got my base core that I can now stab into okay um, and as I say I think that's the biggest issue with people when they're starting out is giving you something to stab into it's always much easier when you're stabbing wool into um, a central core okay so to get this nice little shape going we've got our nice fluffy bit at the end here which I'm just going to spread out and then I'm going to squish it over the bottom and then I'm going to take my two needles and just stab there we go now if they flail apart a bit you can easily just bring them together now let me talk to you about the stabbing now stabbing with your needle now we can do it with a single needle or we can do it with a double needle the double needle is twice as quick whenever we are stabbing in and out the big rule is you go in one angle you come out one angle so even if you're at the side and you're in and out or at an angle in and out doesn't matter as long as it goes in and out the same if you don't if you put your needle into the core like that and you move it I'm not going to do it here it will weaken it and eventually snap off because if you look at our needle I think you can see here it's got a thicker shaft slightly thinning and then by the time it comes to the bit with the barbs on 
it's quite thin okay wool is quite tough um, as you will attest to once you've actually stabbed this snowman quite a lot it will be quite quite solid um, and so needles will break so that's the rule they won't break providing you go in out in out exactly the same because the way um, felting works is we've got our barbs on our needle if we flick them we can fill them and if you put wool under a microscope it's got scales on it so obviously not to be seen by the human eye and the barbs coming together with the scales um, will actually lock them together when you have your um, jumper which has been put in the washing machine too hot and it shrinks and doesn't come out because those scales have locked and they can't come out now i'm just going to mention here in case you can still see i have very dirty um, fingernails so it would appear but actually i was dyeing my wool um, yesterday what well, was the day before yesterday now and i'm still struggling to get the dye off my fingers so i apologize for that please don't be um, sidetracked by the color so let's get going again as I said, I'm using my two needle and we're going to go in and out, in and out. Sometimes I will show you um, doing it at an angle, but that's fine because I'm always going in and out, in and out at the same angle. OK, right. So we're just going to stab around um, this bottom part where we've actually pulled that wool around and we will flatten off the bottom because this is going to be the bottom of our snowman. We want him to be able to stand up so we need to make sure we can do that by having that nice flat base so let's just start now by stabbing that in the bottom into that core knot that we've put in there just to give us a go to start with and then off we go again now you will probably notice I don't bring my needle very high I keep my needle quite low you don't need to you know launch <laughs> we're not launching a weapon um, we are just stabbing with a needle so we can just keep our needle nice and low and you're more likely to stab yourself if you bring the needle up high or in my case if I'm too busy talking on camera um, it has been known that I stabbed myself. So here we go. I am just turning it around so that all of my stabbing is even all the way around. It's also important to note that at this stage um, it obviously won't look anything like a snowman. Um, we always say that um, halfway through you will think, goodness, um, is this ever going to come together? And usually the little projects come together in the last sort of 25, last 25% 25 of the actual time you spend, they start coming together. So that's, as I say, I'm just stabbing it round. We've still got our other piece here to join onto it. So we really are just at this moment um, saying, right, this is the kind of shape that we're trying to do. Lovely. So bottom part, I've now got that. It's still very soft because I'm going to stab this into it and it's going to then um, get much more solid. So let's pull down the extra bit we've got at the top. OK, so just start. I'm going to stab just in that top half there. And um, where we did two knots and my knot um, sat next to the other knot, as it were, there was a dip obviously between and I, what I might well do is just fold that up into that little dip to fill that in a little bit. Once again, I'm not worried about the fold because I will be adding more wool on top. So I don't have to worry about what appears to be a seam or something that I think, oh no, I wouldn't want. And also we've got to decide which way is going to be the front and if you want to actually have a little belly on your snowman um, and we're going to be making a scarf which will absolutely cover up the join um, when we put the head on 
so we won't be fretting about that either. Okay. Oh, got a little bit of stray coloured wool in there. We certainly don't want that. Here we go. And I am turning continually, stabbing turn, stabbing turn. Just making sure that's nice and even. And then I will pull down the other half. Here we go. So let's pull down this other half. That. You notice what I do here is I tend to just um, squish it together with my fingers. Can you see how I do that? Squish it together and then it kind of puffs up a little bit and basically I stab down the puffed up wall. I still um, maintain I would rather um, just keep adding wall to build up um, a structure than take the whole lot to start with wrap it round in the shape and just keep stabbing because you are then just stabbing one shape continually and my um, well my psyche would much rather um, be adding adding more wall and it feels like I'm achieving something but if you would prefer to just take the hole and roll it all up and do it that way then go ahead there is no absolute right or wrong way I'm hopefully just showing you my way using the instructions to do this um, and if this is your first time then hopefully that's helpful but if this is something that you've done many times you will no doubt have your own way of doing things might be completely different to mine because we all have our little ways of doing things right now let's just see I've got a nice little bit sticking up there just gonna stab that down with my two okay we start adding yes I'm not really worried either about my top apart from the fact that I want it to be solid because the heads obviously going to go in there but because I created my little knot um, it's not very rounded on top which is probably going to work um, to my advantage because then when I stick the head on it's got a nice little plateau rest upon even though we will be felting it in obviously it won't just be resting on it but it gives it a nice, nice little platform just making sure that top bit is nicely felted as I say it doesn't need to be rock solid you decide how solid you want your snowman to be now I think Obviously, if your snowman's been out in the cold all night, he may be a bit solid. But if you've just freshly made him in the snow, he might be fluffier and softer. So, up to you. Completely and utterly up to you. Right. Now, that bottom half definitely needs some building up, which I will do by adding fluff but I shall just take that piece all the way down there we go yes it's nice and squishy in that bottom bit I do need to strengthen him up a bit because that's going to be the bottom the base Oops, sorry move that back into the middle I have a tendency to bring it back towards me too much Okay. 
still just doing it all the way around nice and evenly so that whatever I'm doing I'm doing all the way around okay I think that's getting us back to the start where I had the piece that I brought down from the top and I think we're ready to add some more. Let's just flatten in that bottom again. Make sure that's nice and in the middle there. Okay. Yeah. Funny old shape at the moment. So, right. Let's take another piece. Let's pull that in half. And in fact, let's pull that in half again so that little extra piece in our fluff there okay so i initially want to build up this bottom bit just a little bit more so i'm just gonna wind that round that bottom bit and there we go and stab that in But obviously it depends how your shape is doing and whether you needed to add it evenly all the way up which we will do in a minute once we've built up a little bit on this bottom part we will take it all the way up but winding it round like that is a nice way to make sure there's not too much air because otherwise an awful lot of the stabbing is knocking the air out um, but we'd like to at this stage there's another little piece of oat or corn um grass even at this stage we're just getting our shape together so we don't actually need to um spend any longer doing the stabbing unless this is the part that obviously you really really love this initial bit i have to say i find it quite a calming part of the process because a repetitive process like this where you're still creating can be quite enjoyable I was going to say if you're watching something on telly but watching something whilst doing this is not I should say listening because I do a lot of listening to the TV if I'm stabbing in the lounge rather than watching because if you're watching TV whilst stabbing that will result in um, some injuries shall we say right okay second so I've still got that whole piece we've got this I'm going to wrap it round again and slightly bring it up to the middle this time okay so I just brought it up that far that time just to build it up a little bit just stabbing again all the way around see because we're stabbing um, every time we add a piece that helps build up that core as well because we're stabbing towards that um, knot that we've put in the center to our core and so that's why we only have to um, take our needle halfway into <coughs> our little creation we don't stab all the way through I mean we have our mat here in case we have got rather excited in the stabbing and for when we want to do the smaller pieces like when we come to do the hat um, but really most of the time the mat is just there to make sure we're not actually stabbing into the mat there we go still just Stabbing into the core, into the centre, building up the strength and the shape all at the same time. There we go. 
right and okay I'm going to take that in half and I'm going to do it again this time go round and up again okay you can see I've got quite a bit of fluff that time didn't I, I didn't do it quite so tight which is fine and we'll just make sure I my little needles they keep turning around don't they okay there we go lovely once again just all the way up and down Needle felting quite lends itself, doesn't it, to a snowman and the, the look and the texture of the wool and the snow. And little Christmas decorations. I wonder whether we will get much snow this year. to say I seem to have not put that quite as tight as I did the first um, couple of layers which merely means um, I'm just doing a little bit um, more stabbing than I needed to on the first layer just to get the air out basically and once again the speed with which you stab is completely up to you um, I consider my stabbing to be quite fast so don't feel like you have to go the same speed as me you can easily just deliberately go in and out as fast as you want to okay it's not a race it's about enjoying the process and uh, if you are starting out, the nice thing about these um, little projects is that they are nice and quick. Here we go, just going to stab on the bottom there again because I've added some bits around the edge there. So let's just make sure that they're stabbed in too. Okay, so we've still got another piece to add, so I'm going to have an assessment in a minute and decide whether I'm just going to add one piece all the way over or whether I need little sort of extra bits in different places to bring the shape where I want it to go. Okay, so let's have a look at our shape here. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's not bad, not bad. Now I'm going to just stab a little bit in the top here. Now what I'm doing this time is I've got a slight angle and I'm going from the top down. Purely because um, by doing that, I'm moving the wool inside in a downwards direction rather than a towards the center direction and I'm only doing that because the top part I want to be just slightly thinner than the bottom part and it just helps to do that it doesn't make a lot of difference but what I don't want to do is to have a rock solid thick top so once again, I'm doing a little bit of squidging and seeing the um, wall if it lifts up, you know, because there's air underneath it. And obviously I haven't stabbed it to within an inch of its life. So of course there'll be bits which come up. But I'm, once again, just, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it into halfway max 
I'm not actually even that um, thin shaft at the bottom. I'm not even taking it all the way in. If you see, it's probably about three quarters of the way in that I'm doing, especially when I'm neatening up the top bits like this. I really am just tidying up that top because as I'm pressing it's feeling quite nice and solid in the middle. There we go. Just having a look all the way round before we decide where we're going to add that final piece as I say. I'm thinking at the moment because he's still quite slim I might add him towards the bottom giving him a little bit of a belly okay yes I think that's quite okay so let's have a look around now I look when I'm looking at him around um, Oh, look at the dye on those fingernails, I'm so sorry. Um, right, so his belly seems to be about there, doesn't it? So, yeah, that's fine. Right, I'm going to just pull that in two a minute. And I'm going to, I'm going to try and get it tighter this time than I did the last time. Just put that round the bottom. and felt that in. Next stage, once we've done this, is we're going to make the head. And, uh, and the arms out of the white wall. Now I always like to leave uh, um, a little bit of the wall just in case as we're going along we sometimes sometimes think oh I could have covered up a little bit there a little bit here but the nice part about this little snowman is um, he's going to have a scarf he's going to have a hat buttons so he's going to have quite a few little things on him So you might want to choose strategically where you put those bits. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is roll him up and down in my hand. Okay, so that I can see. Where. He needs more stabbing. As I say, on my one, I quite like the idea of him being a little bit fluffy, because obviously it's fluffy snow. And I'm just, once again, just doing a little light tack in, rather than all the way into the centre. I quite like him being fluffy. Okay, let's have another look. See how he looks. Okay, now then, does he stand up? He does stand up. Lovely. Right. So I've got a bit of a belly really and then up here I just want to make him a little bit tougher in the middle there because that's where I'm going to add my snowman head to. So let's just make sure he's nice and tough in there. As I say, got a nice little plateau really for him to go 
go on. Okay. Lovely. Right, so one last piece and I'm going to put this piece all over. So just going to stretch him out a little bit. There we go. So that I can start there. And just roll it up. So as I say, there's a little bit, a little bit all over. And just lightly. It feels like I'm tacking them on, but I am felting. Um, but I don't need to go all the way into the centre. I'm just felting this top layer onto the previous top layer, which was felted onto the layer underneath it. There we go. That's fluffing up a bit, so I should just do a little bit more here before I move it around. Okay, move it around again. As I say, you can see a, a nice bit of fluffiness. And once again, if you just roll it in your hand, that will just get rid of any um, stab marks. And give it a more even surface. this part <coughs> then we're going to split the rest of the white wall that we have and turn half of it into a head and attach it and then the other half will turn into little arms okay let's give them a little bit of a roll there. Okay. Yeah, I think I quite like that. I like that as is. I think I like that now as this little front. Okay. Now that's how I'm going to leave mine. He's a little bit fluffy, but if I squidge him, I can squidge him still. You know, he's not solid as a rock, but he's got a nice solid base, solid top. He's not going anywhere. Right, so two things now. We are going to prepare our half and half, but we also want to take a piece off, which will allow us to join the head to the body. So one piece like that, one piece like that. Just pop that on there. And I'm going to pull this in half. So I've got two pieces again. So I've got that piece for the... Um, arms and this piece for the head to take a little black piece out okay so and then let's just pull that in half as well lovely right now this is going to be our joining piece so what we're going to do here is do a little crisscross there you go a little cross we're just going to lightly Felt that there on the mat in that central as they the two pieces cross over. Okay, turn them over lightly. Now he's going to be our joining part. So um, basically, he will enable us to join the head. We will now just put that on the top bit there. Stab it around. I 
and then when we're ready to put our head on there we'll pull that up and around and it will join it okay so the head um, you won't be surprised here that we're going to tie a knot in the head and then wrap all the wool around makes sense doesn't it so let's fold that piece um, in half so that I've got about that size and then do a little knot in the middle once again I'm not going to pull it so tight just so that it feels it's still squishy but it's got a um, substance about it then I shall take the piece that's folded and wrap that around and that's what we're now going to stab into that little knot in the center just gives us a nice substantial piece of wool to stab into like we did when we did the center of the body I'm not too worried about the shape of it I am just stabbing it in at the moment because I've got the bottom half of the end to bring up as well as this half to add to it of course you need to decide yourself how big a head you want on your little snowman all decisions decisions isn't that about what you want on yours I mean of course we're doing here a red scarf and a black hat you know you might want to be controversial and do a red hat and a black scarf completely up to you or if this isn't your first um, project and you've actually got other wool around or you've bought one of the um, additional felting kits which have got extra wool in you might want to use other colors completely up to you right now then I'm going to bring that down Let's once again we do only need to stab into the center you don't need to stab all the way through but it's always good to have them out there just in case and keep your fingers to the side and not underneath quickly it starts to form just make sure you keep moving it around so you're not just felting in one side and the ball shape will almost fall itself because you're actually felting around that little round knot in the center remember okay now spread out that bit which was the end and put that in there Again, just felting in these puffy bits, loose bits. But doing it nice and evenly all the way around our little head. it's in the same way that if you're building a snowman in the snow 
you know you may want to give your little head more character and give him a chin and give him a long head who knows okay you can do all of that There we go. Okay, got a nice little round shape now. Hopefully you are too. And then we will just add our other bit that we've got until it's the size we want it to be. This is where you decide when to stop when you decide it's big enough or small enough, whichever way you're going. It's completely up to you. think his head needs to be bigger than that. Yes I do. Okay so let me take half of that off. So because he's a circle I am going to add it like that. So just take that in the centre there a second. This is how I'm going to add it. Tucking it underneath and then those bits come down there. But let me just, number one, it kind of makes sure it's quite even. And number two, it makes it easier for going around. Because if I was adding um, a ribbon around it, that I would end up having to go all over the place anyway. So it just gives a little bit of structure to the adding as it were and um, you decide how puffy it's going to be you just need to remember we are going to add a nose and eyes in there so it needs to be strong enough that we can add something like that to it turning and stabbing. Okay, now let's put that bit up that way. Put that bit across that way. Again, and if I need to add some more, then I shall add the last piece if I decide it's big enough this time. It's just it's much easier to add a piece than add a more, another piece uh, than it is to add too much and then think, oh, I've either got to felt this in harder to make it smaller or try and take a piece off. And whilst that's possible when you've only lightly tacked it on not quite so easy if you've had a good old 
sculpt in place. Now, I haven't mentioned um, needle felting tools yet, but you can obviously get little felting tools which enable you to put more than one needle in. I think um, you can get two needle, but more often than not, you get three needle holders, but obviously you can put just two in, um, which is often the way. I can't remember if there's only two needle ones, but so I've certainly seen three needle ones. or if you struggle to hold the needle just plainly like um, I'm doing now you can get individual um, singular needle holders that's obviously in the wrong that's just holding it in and take it out put it around the other way so that you've actually got the needle out um, which I know some people prefer because holding on to a small top like this can be difficult so there are plenty of tools out there to help you. Um, and obviously there are multi ones in terms of you know five, seven, all sorts of numbers of needles in for when you're doing very flat pieces. Um, I think people use that in 2D needle felting and also if you were doing um, like a, I don't know, a big ear or something on a larger animal and you wanted to make a flat piece which you then add on later then sometimes those multi needles are good for that too to flatten down the piece right, let's have a roll around in my hand okay well that seems quite nice so again let me just move that out the way and have a little look oh, I quite like that size bearing in mind this bit's also going to be put around it so by the time I've put that round it I think that's quite a nice size right I'm going to leave that little piece there and you never know I might want it later I might make a little snowball or something for him to decorate him with okay so we've already put this piece in we're now going to add the head on top and let me decide yes i decided that that was kind of his little belly right okay up and over Okay. Let's do the other way just so we got it all loosely tacked on. And then we can do the big stab up that way. There you go. Now before I've stabbed that all in I'm going to take my single needle and I'm going to put it in the center and I'm going to take it down till it's that far in okay so that the barbed area is going to be here oh, there's a little extra fellow come to join us there come on okay a little bit of vegetable matter right so I'm going to stab it in the top 
so that it always goes to set and then I'm just going to stab it in and out there so that basically it's joining the head okay in the center because obviously what we're doing by bringing this up is it's joining it all around the sides and I just want to make sure he's got an extra there we go in the center okay now that's good enough for the moment and now I'm going to just stab all this in around the head bear in mind we are going to put a scarf around his little neck here so I'm not too worried about this bit and if I need to add a little bit to make it a stronger join I will but at the moment I am just doing a general stabbing those loose bits into the head so that he has got his join and then we'll decide whether we need any extra strength on it or not I've gone all the way around down at this level I should come up to the top and neaten that up as well and then we'll be ready to do these little arms have a little hat on his head isn't he that will be sweet okay now I decided that was his little belly same bit of vegetable matter getting about of it isn't it right so that was his so I think because I this is going to be the front of his head so let me just make sure that's nicely all the loose bits have filtered in because I need to add my little eyes and my little nose and my little mouth and everything there now because I was going to give him his little belly um, this side and say so he's quite secure not going anywhere um, I think I'm going to emphasize his little belly and uh, this bit I've got over just chop it in half and I'm going to make a little a little pillow and um, I'm just going to emphasize that little belly there for no reason other than that's just the little look that I'm going to give him and as I say you just need to decide what little look you want to give yours whether you want him to be nice and straight and slim like he is here you know you might want to uh, give, be making more rotund all over up to you you might even 
want to have um, a female, a snow woman. cushion there. So as you can see it's easy enough just to add a little piece if you decide that you need a little bit of an addition. Now what I'm going to do is just add an extra little bit over that join there just to fluff that up a bit. where I added that there was a distinct line so just by swirling and adding I can make that less of a line to do a little bit of the top there. Yes, I think so. Just make that a little bit of a fuzzier area there so that we don't have a distinct join. you decide how you want yours to be and I've always got my little extra pieces there in case you want to do some more but I've got even going to add the arms and things yet there he is right lovely always paying mine to the bottom the fact that okay so you're wobbling that way so let's just make sure there you go it's better lovely excellent okay so now we are going to make his little arms which are basically going to come around here so if we look at the picture um, in 7b we can see they're just going to be the length of the width of your hand so let's pull off about that much yeah okay so there are a number of ways we could do this you could just take this roll it up and stab it into shape and put some rounded ends and do it that way or you could wrap it around a pencil let me show you that way I'm just going to stretch this out so that um, it's a little bit longer okay so I'm gonna make him that long so about that long but with that includes the fluffy edge so let me start and now here be sure that when I'm pulling it I'm pulling it tight to the pencil and not way out here if I put it out here it will just um, split okay there you go just pulling it pulling it when I'm really tight around here okay put it up put it up okay now pull it off and I've got a little round 
which isn't pulling apart but let me initially use my one needle to just tack that in because once again I'm not going all the way through to the foam pad underneath I'm just felting into the center of the arm okay and it doesn't require that much felting but let me take the two and once again still only into the center and here I'm doing a little bit of squishing up again but I am just felting into the center so it's just that top bit that I'm taking in and I'm just making sure that it's not going to unravel in a minute we'll decide which one's going to be the fluffy end I think it looks like it's that end at the moment <coughs> and we'll check the sizing but let's make the other one first As I say, if you look at the instructions, that just shows you the other way, which is you have that length and then you just felt it along that length into a rounded arm shape. And I'm just showing you an alternative way if you have a pencil or even, I mean, you could actually use something <coughs> like a very thick cocktail stick. And do it a bit looser right so if we put that on that's actually good that's longer because what I need to do is to stab that in so we've got that rounded you see that little rounded end okay so I decide whether I was going to use the single or the double I've got the double at the moment I'm literally just um, pulling it in on itself so from the outside in so all those thinner areas okay and I'm just going to stab it in that direction before I stab it down into the center once again rather than all the way through to the pad just into the center okay into the center okay now that bit feels just not quite as stabbed as the other so I'm just going to make sure there's no weak link there And it's actually going to be stabbed onto the body it's not going to be requiring its strength itself but even so and once again just into that end make sure we've got that nice and non-fluffy okay here we go Okay, we'll do the second one. Once again, that was the maximum length. Let's pull it out. Just to elongate it. So just lightly stretching it, pulling the fibers out very, very lightly. So we've got a longer length, that's all. To there, okay start there wrap around pulling tight as I say really close to the um, pencil not stretching it out because that would absolutely pull it apart okay there we go I'm going to pull that off again 
and once again so it doesn't automatically unravel <coughs> certainly looks again like we've got the fluffier end that end and the more um what can I say secure neater the neater end so I am just stabbing into the center again into the center of the arm little squeeze give it a little squeeze so I've got something to stab in there we go little squeeze stab it into the center all the way through round again but as I say I will just I'll use one of the other pieces and I will show you the rolled up method in case this really doesn't work for you and you can't work out how to do the other way okay that one feels much neater than the other one who knows why right let's In the center and run the edge into the center we come to add the arms if it is a little bit long we can easily just make it a little bit shorter okay They're about the same width he's a bit longer isn't they shorter perhaps remember you don't have to do any of this um, harshly it's just gentle little um, maneuvers slightly fatter than the other right so if you are going to take this and you are going to make him into um, by just doing it lengthways you really are going to just roll him up and then stab okay so stab in Step around keep rolling it up basically and if you've made him and think and is that all um, should be a bit thicker then you can just add a little bit more we have a Okay. 
and I will roll it and then decide if you were doing you know make that the stabbing into itself neat little sort of hand end as it were just need to be careful of your fingers if you're um, worried about your fingers I often get a piece of card or a business card and just hold it together with that roll it between your hands again now I personally would make that a little bit thicker but that's the that's the process okay okay so we have our little arms which are going to go around him like that how cute so he will, because he needs to hold his um, broomstick, doesn't he? Round. So he probably is too long. I need to make him a little bit shorter. So we can just... Literally just pull a bit out of the centre and then flare it out okay and then make that a bit stronger so that basically he will have his little round arm going around that and we can felt that in and then we can easily make that neater at the back with a bit of the extra okay so he comes out much easier didn't felt him as well at the end so that's fine Right, so next thing is our little broomstick, I think. So I think if we try and do our little thirds, take off one third, got two thirds left. still going to be a little bit too long there okay his string okay what I'm going to do is keep folding it the right length that's about the right length so I'm only going to cut the top bits okay 
okay so how about we then put that through there like that if I've not given it away now you'll probably know I've not done this before so there we go and then we will wrap a little piece of spare around which should keep it nice and tight and in little broom. Now we can chop the little bits off and even them up or we can just leave them nice and haphazard and I will neaten off the very end bits but the bits which are it just goes to show he's been doing a lot of work with it doesn't it. So there we go. Excellent had a little break from recording there just to give the um, film a chance to download okay so we have our little snowman we have our arms we have our little broom and maybe those little pieces across there that I'll put later so we're on to the hat now this is quite exciting so with regards to the hat, obviously you need to make, we're going to make the flat and the rim of the hat first and um, obviously if we give an idea with regards to size but it entirely depends how big head. I think I've got quite a big head and I'd quite like mine to fit. So basically we're doing round we just need to decide how big we want it. If you look at our little picture, it's obviously just slightly hanging over. So, yeah. I think the instructions, let me have a look. What do they recommend in terms of sizes? Just so we have an idea. Five centimetres. Okay. So, what's that? Two inches? Five centimetres? So, could well be. But, what we're going to do is we are going to put some fluff down there I'm going to put some fluff down the other way and we are going to or should we just start with that fluff to probably start with that fluff to start with I'm going to draw a circle okay now you might want to um, measure a circle or cut out a circle but and draw around that but I'm literally going to stab around a circle. I will show you why we're going to do that. The stabbing is important just because it's going to establish the rim. Okay, and this is why I did want to put a bit the other way. I'm going to put a bit less the other way. So we're just going to put a little bit less the other way. Just to stab around that side there. Now, we're going to flatten down this middle. Okay, okay. So that's... I've kind of established the size that I'm doing here and I've got to be honest I'm winging it but if you want to do the same size as um, in the instructions that's two inches five centimeters if you want to draw yourself a little um, 
template and put that around then do that or like me just wing it i'm now going to just send, stab down in the center now whilst i am stabbing into the mat a bit because it can't be helped because this is with the old um, flat piece i am not going in too far i'm trying to do it fairly shallow so that i'm not stabbing it right into the mat i'm kind of feeling the mat and stopping and coming back out again because i am trying to get my shape I'm not felting outside, I'm just felting inside that circle so that I can avoid cutting if I can. That's my theory. For us all. Now, this is how I always do my shapes, if I can help it. Sometimes you end up shaving or cutting off um, fluffy bits no matter what. But this gives us a good chance to make a shape without having to cut it. Also, depending on how thick your piece ends up, it will be felted, but it might be too thick. If it's too thick, what I do to thin it down is I use either hair straighteners or an iron. So just basically put some heat on it and to make it less dense no less thick more dense okay now i'm going to now oh over my little fella roll in the edges okay and make as close to it now bearing in mind this doesn't need to be a perfect, perfect circle. So I really am just making a nice curved edge all the way around. substantial hat base I'm going to look there so my only concern is if it's too thick but then I have the trusty iron come hair straighteners up my sleeve if I need to a little bit of veg matter there take that out okay and now I'm just going to stab in these loose pieces that we've brought in. Okay. Until it's the same basically now when I pick it up off the mat it is going to spring up a bit and hopefully we haven't stabbed it in too far into the mat now that I've got a bit of thickness here I can very much make sure I am just stabbing into the wall and I am now going to just gradually lift up and turn it over okay oh that's not bad a little bit thick so I'll tell you what we'll do we'll pretend we'll make a iron we'll flatten it our heat from our hand and the friction that will probably do it yeah now that's good okay so this is where you might want to I keep talking about business cards I'm looking around to see if I've actually got one handy never have one handy when I need one but this is where you'd put a business card to protect your fingers if you needed to and I'm literally just felting in the edges I 
or if you don't want to do that you could always snip them off with a pair of scissors it's completely up to you I just try to neaten it up first Twirling it round, tucking a few ends in. Now, that's quite substantial to be honest. Fairly happy with that as a base. Let me have a little look and see. Right, now, he fits okay. Looks a bit um, French at the moment, doesn't he? But that felted down would be okay okay so what you might want to do is just take your little scissors and just snip around the ends just to neaten it up there we go lovely Brilliant. Pop that down there. Drink of water. Right. Now we need to make um, the top part of the hat. So what we're going to do is to basically make a little tube and then flatten it on top. So I've taken off of my black piece, um, a piece as wide as the mat, quite chubby piece. Now sometimes I do need a little help to get started on the rolling up, so it helps to roll round something. Okay. If you're good at rolling you don't need that okay now I'm going to now squash that in with my single needle squish him down so that he's a bit thicker a bit of a chubbier little column down the centre and then let's just do a little bit in here now one end is going to be wider than the other end and that end will be your top at the moment I'm literally just felting down the middle now I think that end's slightly wider isn't it so this is going to be my top end so let's just do a bit of felting where we just felt into the middle of the tube okay and then we've decided we're going to make this end the top so we now concentrate on getting this top bit started down because he's still too high and that's fine because it gives us the ability to just felt that down until we're happy now obviously you can make this as big a top hat as you want to now there we go that's quite good now let's from the bottom felt up a line, 
squishing with our fingers, normal technique. There we go. bottom up. I'm going from the bottom up so that it would move wool upwards rather than into the centre and rather than downwards because we want more wool at the top than we do the bottom. It doesn't move that much but it just means it's all going in the right direction. Okay, there we go. Now that's still a bit fluffy and that's the way it should be because we need to add that. Now let's see whether we need to add a bit to the width because it may be. Okay. That will be our little hat. Maybe we do need to add a little bit to that width just to make him a little bit more. Okay. Let me turn this other light on. I think it's got darker. Bit of light from that direction. Okay. Now I'm just literally going to wrap, do we see that? So I'm going to take this small piece and I am just literally going to wrap it round the top just to make it a little bit thicker. My single needle stab into the centre, not all the way through. If you're hitting the foam, you're going too hard. There we go. Okay, from the top down again. Make sure that's a nice flat top. little bits which have come over the top, a little squeeze, bottom to top, little squeeze, bottom to top, you just put a few fluffy bits at the top which we will sort out. Again, bring those to the top, just felt them in. Nice flat top. Okay, I'm just going to rub that top into my hand. Just give it that nice flat base and then make sure it comes down into a narrower bit at the bottom. Okay, let's look again. Oh, I like that better. Yes. Right, now, now that's the size I want it to be. I am going to basically squash it 
into the bottom. The bits that I've got um, pulled around, put it a bit more, I shall then felt that into the bottom around that little bit. So once again, let's make sure it's a bit more central than that, shall we? Right, make sure you're central or not central if you want it to have a wonky hat. Put it wherever you want it to be. Now I am felting downwards, but I'm not felting enormously into the, I'm doing it at an angle so that I am felting down into the center but also downwards into the actual bottom of the hat. Okay just so that it's joining it we'll turn it upside down in a minute and felt from the other side so he's attached lovely now that central bit I'm just going to being careful not to go outside that central bit because I don't want to stab my fingers at the other side there we go and then I have my little hat just going to squish him down a bit more with him I love that okay he's going to be popped over there too just going to get another drink come on then you go if you want to Now, okay, so we have our hat, we have our little brush, we have our arms. I think we are now ready to do our little buttoned coat and then button coat, eyes, mouth, nose. And then we do a little scarf. In fact, shall we make a little scarf now and then he'll be all ready. Okay, let's make the scarf ready. That'll be nice. And then we'll just be putting it all together. Okay. Yes, so let's leap ahead and do the scarf. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Right, now what we're going to do here is we've got our lovely red. So we need to decide how much he's going to have come round and round. So I guess, okay. It's about, it's about two lengths of the mat. Okay, that's fair enough. And then let's pull that off there. 
so it's about two lengths of the mat and he's quite a flat scarf isn't he so we're going to just felt that in the line the way it is it's about two centimeters thick something like that and we're just going to stab down in the line I'm going to do it that way okay two centimeters thick get the line down okay and just don't stab too far into the mat again you will be touching it obviously can't help not to do that use your two just to get that as felted as we can okay let's move that along obviously that is too thick for what we're going to do we're going to fold it over but it's good to get some felting done first before we do that because um, once we've felted it a bit when we fold it over that line will be a better line on the fold okay so not felting too much again There we go. Put this together. Okay. Just, just get that felting started. worry about the length of it again in a minute but we'll just get the thickness right first because we need to fold this over you see how by because we felted it a bit by folding it over that's a nice little edge we've got there yeah so fold that over and then Felt down the outside edge first. Okay. there we go so it's not really much felting because we you know it's a fluffy scarf so you don't want it to be flat it still needs to have a bit of um, depth and that to it it's just making it substantial enough that it's a scarf but not too flat so that it looks like a piece of fabric We will no doubt have to take some of the length but that's fine because it's probably a bit flimsy at the edge anyway and so it's good to see where we get to with that and then make a decision okay there we go 
Okay. Now I think that looks quite scarf like. Just make sure that's not too flimsy there. Just tuck it over. Just tuck those edges in. It's a bit fluffy. Now we will have an outside edge and an inside edge, so that's all fine. Just neating it up that little edge. I don't think that'll be that important. Right, let's have a little, a little look. Yes, obviously too long. Over. Of course, you might want a much longer one that, and which is fine. Um, but the model that we are going after is just a little bit shorter than that. Okay. So let's start by neatening up this edge by just folding it over. And stabbing that in, felting that. Um, measure that again that's your front bit it's going to come around he's going to go over and he's going to go down there so that'll be the end about there so if that's going to be the end about there it's going to make my little line try and see if we can pull any of that other bits off to that line and then we'll tuck it over okay tuck that over felt those loose bits in single needle less likely to stab myself okay okay so we have our little scarf lovely right back to the buttons right how do we make our little buttons with a very little piece of fluff right you will need the smallest piece of fluff which you will put between your fingers and just swirl round until you get a little bubble okay so we can decide now are we going to do four like there is on there do you want to do more do you want to do less so it depends really doesn't it on whether yours is the same size as the model or taller so i'm just going to add one so single needle pop it on just take because obviously it's not um a perfect sphere there are some um, little bits flailing out just take underneath not I've just got a bit underneath and stab that in 
okay whilst I've done that a little bit and then around the other side take that and stab it out basically just stab around until you get that little little button okay produce a few more of those here's a few that I produced earlier oh one very big one won't want that if you do a big one just pull it apart there we go yeah made a few little bubbles lovely okay so I think that's a nice gap once again just stabbing underneath keep grabbing a thing to stab underneath until you might need to stab around the other side just to get it under control this is really is a case of less is more when it comes to the buttons you need a very small amount and then let's say just around the outside you do not need to stab in the middle and if you want to emphasize the button by actually stabbing around the outside of the jacket then do that too okay there you go number three is going there once again just stabbing underneath and then going around the other side just holding it down but all the time stabbing in the bottom of the little bobble so that you basically get the little buttons standing out can you see yeah They're kind of standing out a little bit yeah there we go number four is going to go there underneath around the outside okay one two three four now the scarf's going to be around there so I'm not really going to see it am I so I'll just leave it at four okay so we need to do the eyes and the mouth so the mouth is going to be a really tiny piece of fluff that we've pulled out okay now it might be as well to decide where those eyes are going to go so that then you can put the mouth basically from eye to eye you see what I mean if you look at the picture also so we're going to have our little hat which might come down a little bit so let's have a little look at where we're going to put our eyes so I'm going to probably have I'm going to do a little dip where I'm going to put it just by felting in and thinking yeah that's where I'll put my little eyes okay so in exactly the same way I'm going to now just stab underneath putting that little black eye in there we go and then around the other side just because I've put my little dip I can find that easily without even though I'm upside down just 
grabbing underneath. There we go. Neatening up that little bit in between. Right, so we will be putting his little nose there. Let me once again just put a little dip in. Okay, we're going to make his little nose in a second. But that just helps me decide. I've lost my little piece that I pulled off just now for the mouth. Okay, so we are going to give him a little smile, aren't we? And it's going to end there. So let's just take this round it. There we go. Sometimes if you just twirl it round, you can then just grab it. Okay. I'm going to hold on to that central bit because when I grab this bit, put it underneath, I don't want the central part of his smile to disappear. Now, I'm going to stab a smile basically with a very thin bit of wool. So you basically anchor it both ends in the dimple, as it were, and then right there. And then bring the little line along so that he's smiling. There we go, little smile. I mean, he's smiling slightly more that side than that one, so I might bring him down a little bit. Okay, so the nose, yes. Now, there are many ways we can do this. Let me initially show you my preferred way and then I'll show you other ways if this doesn't work for you because everyone's different as to how they prefer to do it. My way requires you to have a cocktail stick so you may not have a cocktail stick but if you do this is my preferred way of doing it. Okay so cocktail stick very thin piece of the orange carrot colour underneath the cocktail stick hold, held with the finger and then just wrapping round how we did earlier it's, so it's nice and tight wrap hold tightly to the con to the cocktail stick and just keep wrapping to get to the top then wrap back and back up to the top if you've still got some until you get to the end okay now I'm going to twizzle that round and then I'm going to take it off now you can see it's larger than we need it but we do have a little carrot shape now you do need to do a little bit of stabbing to make sure that doesn't come apart and one way we need to stab is from this end all the way through so we've got a central support still not quite all the way through to the point of the carrot not that it has to be an immaculately straight carrot there's not many immaculately straight carrots these days or any time really right and then slightly so he is basically formed with his little carrot nose 
and then it's just a light little stab along there just to make sure it doesn't come apart okay made him a little bit long there back down the centre and once again roll him and you get your little carrot shape okay oh often when I do it like this I end up finding that it's kind of like a double ended so I can decide whether I want that end or that end and I quite literally chop it down the middle so that then I can decide okay so that's one way of doing our little carrot noses another way of doing it is with our small piece let's start with a little bit more okay let's start folding over into a triangle Okay, have our triangle, little stab, and then we fold that triangle again into a smaller triangle and keep folding and then do a bit of stabbing down the middle just so it doesn't all fall apart. Okay, folding that over again. It's just a case of folding, 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 but the triangle, smaller triangle, smaller triangle. And stabbing a little just to keep it together. At the moment, it's still quite thick and um, flimsy so this is where you're going to roll it and initially it will come quite there we go once again it's always quite good to stab back down and then just do that end bit again and then you do have, but once again it's too long, so chop him off. And then you've got your little, little nose. So, there you go. I've got several noses I had over here. That's the two I just did. These are the ones that I did earlier. So, let's decide. Are we going to have him? It's not bad, is it? Ooh, quite like that okay we'll have him so where I made my little mark I am now going to just felt stab it down into the center but downwards he just needs to be felted in so that he doesn't fall off it's not like he needs to hold weight or anything but he does need to make sure he doesn't fall off so I am just going from the bottom through and down there you go yep seems to be on make sure but it definitely seems to be on there we go lovely so next the scarf so are we going to put the scarf on before the arms or should we put the arms around well let's check where the scarf's going to go 
his scarf's going to come over like that and then so basically in like that and in like that so he's got a lovely big scarf and his arms are going to come round holding onto his um, little broom which will be here won't it so we need to bring that round there okay so I think we need to stop his little arm about there okay so just checking where that is I'm going to stab that in the back I'm going to take the scarf off so that I can make a neat job of that okay knowing he's coming round because I can stab that up higher knowing that that will keep it on let me get the two stab it up higher because the scarf's going to cover that so that'll be nice now that will go up there and then we can put the other arm on okay so his arm is going to go around like that and it's going to hold on okay so this one is just going to come round we need to match it yeah so he'll go to about there okay so let's stab that in the back again it's not very good is it stabbing someone in the back right let's just make sure that's okay so that actually he's a bit longer move him a little bit is that good now yeah that's better that matches there we go So once I've put the scarf and everything on, what I might do is neaten that up, but I want to see where that all, I'll neaten it up by putting a bit of the extra white that I had left over, which is why I always leave it. Why extra white? I'll just cover it over. Okay. So lovely let's get this scarf on now that little arm you can put it under that there we go and that can come down a little bit and then he can hang on to or if we put that down there and then he can hang on to his little we can even have it flailing out the back of course couldn't we we could have that down there and have it flailing over there that might be quite nice too quite like that quite like that okay so let me tack that on slightly in place nice way to make the edges of the scarf quite rounded as well yes yeah, see I can tidy that up now I'll tidy that up now because I can see now where the scarf's going to and I just want to
tidy up that join sorry bring that into view a bit better just put that on and tidy up that join with a bit of the fluff that's why I always leave a bit regardless of the size and everything that I'm doing just to make sure squished his nose didn't I a couple of times there didn't come off just bent him a little bit bring him back into shape there you go right so that arm needs to come round and just attach slightly there so I'm just going to go slightly at the sides and just do a little tack through the middle bearing in mind I need to cover up any holes there we go that's nice and so we need to hang on to our little that will go in there and we'll bring that round and hang on to that but I want to put his hat on first okay so let me decide how that hat's going to go whether I'm going to make any adjustments to it let me just okay now I quite like this little hat to be a bit of on a jaunty angle there okay so and literally just and I'm gonna step down the center like I did before hang on hang on to your hat step down the center so that I've got a bit of an anchor check. just checking the camera was still on there right I'm gonna down the center make sure that's in then round the center of our column around the, yeah around the edge of the central column there so that, that and then I can decide whether I'd like him No, it looks quite precariously balanced, which um, any snowman I've ever made, his hat has always been precariously balanced. So, hey, there you go. So there's his little, so now I just need to put his little brush in his hand and just tack the other side round the edge round the edge underneath so it doesn't drop it too quickly 
and there you go there we have it I have his little scar I quite like his little scarf flailing actually I quite like that perhaps it should go out the back a bit more rather than around the side there you go so I can't help but feeling that hat is slightly too small for him but I think perhaps a snowman liked it that way yes that's what that's the little story in fact it could be the story of the little snowman with the hat that's too small obviously very easily I could have made that um, bigger in the center um, just to offset that or even made that part of his head a little bit flatter to come down but I quite like that so there we have it there we have it you could obviously have done yourself some orange buttons or red buttons or if you've got other wool around any color that you like um but there you go 